What's going on guys, it's Connor from M Creek Renovations and today I'm pulling up all the hardwood floors from our fixer upper. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what tools you're gonna to need to complete the job and how to actually cut into the floor and remove the flooring without ruining your subfloor underneath. And I'll show you all the tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. All right guys, before we're starting to actually cut into our hardwood floors, we need to figure out the adjustment on our saw itself. So I know I put in a three quarter inch hardwood floors so I'm going to set my blade depth to about three quarter of an inch so it can cut through the hardwood and not cut into the subfloor. Let's go ahead and set the blade and we'll get to cutting. My wife and I have been trying to put out this DIY project for some time until we finally gave in. In my mind, I thought I could just resand the floors after our house fire, but moisture was trapped in between the flooring, causing the planks to buckle throughout the house. After a quick inspection of the floors, there was too many areas that needed to be removed, so we decided to completely tear out all the hardwood and start from scratch. If you're trying to attempt to remove the hardwood floors yourself, make sure when using a circular saw to make each cut around a foot apart. This makes tearing up the floor a lot easier because there's less staples in each piece of the wood. This project took around two weeks to complete, working on evenings after my 9 to 5 job and on the weekends. We decided to tackle this project ourselves because based on the amount of hardwood floors that needed to be removed, this would have cost anywhere from three dollars to $5,000, estimating around 1,500 square foot of space. Instead of paying a contractor, we saved that money and bought two pry bars that cost $30 each, a pack of work gloves for $10, and safety glasses for $15. We already had a circular saw, but if you needed to buy one, it would cost around $90, plus a pack of saw blades, an extra $25, and also I would add in around three truckloads of wood that we needed to haul to the dump. So adding an extra $100 in gas brings the total up to around $300 to remove all the hardwood flooring and took around 30 hours of labor. The first couple of rooms, I actually ripped out the hardwood floors myself, but it was taking a lot longer than I thought, so I decided to call in some backup. I had my brother-in-laws Luke, Jacob, and John come over for two full Saturdays, which really helped out a lot. Any type of demo work is literally a perfect job to start with your friends or family that want to help even if they don't have any experience. At the end of the day, these guys were a huge help, and I couldn't thank them enough. Literally, without them, I would still be there to this day ripping out all the hardwood flooring. So you remember the pack of gloves I said I bought earlier for $15? Well, I bought them after working this day because we jacked our hands up pretty bad. Woo! Oh, man. This is blister central. Dude. Should have brought the Our process went something like this. I made all the cuts with the saw about a foot apart while the two other guys had pry bars and ripped up each row. When I was done cutting the flooring, I would then grab a large trash can and load it up with as many wooden planks as I could, wheel it out to my truck, dump it in the bed, and then repeat until the truck bed was full and it was time to go to the dump. Now that I've showed you how to rip up the hardwood flooring, it's only right to show you what we're going to replace it with. The color scheme my wife is going for is a light and full of neutral colors. A nice light wood such as a white oak would look great throughout the house. So if you're in the same position we are with trying to pick out flooring, it may seem very overwhelming with all the choices that are on the market. Also, this stuff is really expensive, so worst case scenario, spending all this time and all this money on your flooring only to hate it at the end of the day. Let me give you a quick rundown of the three most common flooring types you can have installed in your home. First is a solid hardwood. This is 100% real wood and it comes in unfinished planks. When installed, you have to sand, stain, and apply a finish to complete the flooring. Out of all three flooring types, this option would be the most labor intensive, but at the end of the day has the biggest return on investment for the value of your home. Second is engineered wood flooring. Each plank is made up of around 85% composite material and 15% real wood veneer. The flooring comes sanded, stained, and finished already out of the box. All it would need is to be installed. This route isn't as labor intensive as hardwood flooring, but because of the small layer of veneer, it can't be refinished so it won't last as long as the 100% hardwood option. And last but not least is luxury vinyl plank flooring. This is the cheapest option out of the three wood flooring types and is the easiest to install. You don't need a staple gun or air compressor. All you need is a rubber mallet, saw, and a chalk line, and you're good to go. Although installing this flooring may not increase the value of your home like the other two options would, this is still a great pick for someone who has a smaller budget but still wants to keep the place looking great. You now know how to rip up hardwood flooring and hopefully have a clearer picture of what type of flooring to choose in your home. 
If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to follow along for more house renovation projects.